Welcome to the Startup Competitors Podcast, where we talk with early stage entrepreneurs to understand what information they use to inform product roadmap, strategy, and market differentiation. Hey there, today we're chatting with Brent Williams, who's the founder and CEO of Ben and Kiva. Ben and Kiva works to bridge the gap between insurance carriers, policyholders, and beneficiaries, and they do that with their new claim system, claims processing platform. We spend a lot of time on what's broken with insurance. We spend a lot of time on how Brent and the team have built and scaled out the platform that they have, some of the large accounts that they have, talk a little bit about product market fit, uh, what's coming next. Really enjoyed this conversation with Brent. Hope you do as well. Uh, you can find Ben Akiva at Ben Akiva, B-E-N-E-K-I-V-A dot com. Uh, you can find Brent online, tag him. Tell him thank you for coming on the podcast and thank you so much for listening. This episode is brought to you by Full Stack PEO. Most founders start companies because they figured out a better way to solve a problem or serve a need, not because they love tracking payroll, filling out compliance forms, and explaining employee benefits packages. And yet, all that stuff still has to be done. That's why there's Full Stack PEO. Full Stack PEO specializes in turnkey HR for emerging companies, not just those core services, but advice and expertise that help founders maximize employee potential. Curious? Find out more at fullstackpeo.com. Welcome to the podcast. Today we have Brent Williams, who's the founder and CEO of Benakiva. Brent, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Why don't we open things up with a quick pitch for Benakiva? Yeah. So Benakiva is a uh... We built a claims and customer service platform where we digitized the entire claims process from intake to payout and even retention if there's opportunity to retain assets as part of the claims process. Along with that, we do all the customer servicing processes that go along with managing a policy. You do that as an outsource provider for the insurance company or your platform does that for for the insurance company? The platform does it. Yeah, we're not a TPA or a BPO. Check. Okay, uh, just wanted to clarify. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that felt a little ambiguous to me there. Okay, good. Okay, so everything from submitting the claim to servicing the claim to at, sounds like asset a little bit of asset management, all that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, essentially what happened was is I, I was an investment financial advisor for many, many years and built a very substantial practice. And the, the struggle I had was, you know, working with policyholders, beneficiaries, and carriers, specifically on the claims and customer service side. And what I mean by that is when I was walking a beneficiary through the claim process, I was constantly apologizing for this terrible process. But on the flip side, I'm trying to maintain or gain these beneficiaries as clients. So it just put me in a very tough position to be in the middle of both of those. Interesting. So keep unpacking that story. Then how did you get started with Benakiva? What was the what was kind of the the first step and then maybe take us up to today with current status? Yeah, yeah. It was it was it's been an interesting ride for sure. You know, it started off with research. We decided to do about three years of research to identify were these carrier specific issues or were they industry wide issues? And Then if they were industry-wide issues, if we built the platform to solve these issues, would carriers pay to to use the platform, right? Because it's one thing to build a technology. There's wonderful technologies out there that can't make money, right? So we wanted to make sure that whatever platform we built, when we brought it to the market, the carriers would actually pay to use it. So that was about a three-year process of going and visiting carriers and carrier claim staff. Uh, when you have a book of business the size of mine, uh, you can call a carrier and say, hey, I want to come and visit the claims department. And they open, open willingly let you come and, and visit the claims department because obviously they want you as an advisor to sell more of their products. So if they can ex- you know, show you that they're, they're passionate about paying claims, well, then you feel better about selling their products. The interesting thing was, is when we sat down with claims and customer service staff across the United States, one thing was glaringly clear. These people truly love and are passionate about paying claims. 
you know, and it, it's interesting because on the consumer side, we just assume that, oh, insurance companies don't want to pay claims. They want to do whatever they can not to pay a claim. And I'm here to tell you that that is simply not the truth. Uh, these people do want to pay claims. The struggle they have is, you know, I would sit with a carrier claim staff person and they're sitting in front of three giant monitors. And on each one of these monitors is multiple applications. They've got, you know, a couple admin system applications open. They've got their document storage system, maybe a beneficiary management system, maybe a CRM. You know, the list goes on and on. And the question was, why so many applications? Why so many screens? And, you know, the carrier claim staff said, well, you know, in order to process a claim and do it according to regulations, we have to check all of these things in all of these different systems to make sure that we're paying the claim correctly, accurately, and according to regulations. And so we <laughs> dumbfounded, I asked the question, would it be nice if you had one single system? So you, you just live, breathe, and play in one system. And the claim staff would all of them would say, Oh my gosh, my life would be so much easier. <laughs> you know, so um we took all of that data that we learned over those three years and you know, we didn't set out to build, you know, another claim system. We set out to build the claim system. So that's what we accomplished. We took all of that input that we learned over those three years, and then we started actually building the platform. So, you know, it was a five-year total process, you know, three years of research and then two years of actually building the platform. And then talk a little bit about kind of since you built the platform, just bring us up to date on kind of status of the company that, that can be customers, claims process, fundraising, size of the team, anything you're open and willing to share. You don't have to hit all those. Just paint a picture for where you're at. Yeah. So we, we grew very rapidly. Um, when we came to the market, we knew that based on the research, the platform was a product market fit. What we didn't know is how quick the product will be adopted. Uh, we did know that in the insurance industry, the sales cycles are long. So we were expecting to you know, have to work on this thing for a couple of years before even getting one client. Interestingly enough, the opposite occurred. Uh, we came to the market and got our first client right away. And then within nine months, we got two more clients. And these, you know, these clients were live and in production processing claims, which that's a whole nother story of, you know, execution on implementations. But, you know, we went from one carrier client to three in less than nine months. And then you fast forward to today, you know, two years later, less than two years, uh, we're working with 10 carriers and four of those are tier ones. So four of those are the largest carriers in the world. So we've now proven that the platform can work for small, midsize, and even the largest carrier clients. Our team has grown. We started in 2018 with three people. Today, I think we crossed uh, 45 or 47 people as of last week. And, you know, we hired three more last week. So <laughs> we're constantly hiring people and growing this team. Holy cow, man. You're yeah. riding the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. We have four offices. Um, we have an office here in, in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. We have an office in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We have an office in Nepal. And we have an office in Armenia. What's in Nepal and uh, is it Armenia? Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So the dev teams are managed out of Nepal and Armenia. And uh, we have two separate dev teams. We have an innovation dev team and we have a, a client dev team. And the difference is, is, you know, our roadmap is dictated by our clients. So when our clients come to us and say, wow, it'd be really cool if the platform did this feature. Like the, a perfect example is, one of our carrier clients said, we wish the platform would process a claim from start to finish with nothing more than the beneficiary text messaging, right? So that was basically an entire claims process. We're talking gathering all the documents, getting all the signatures, anything and everything that has to do with that claim being done by a beneficiary using nothing more than text messaging. And so we said, wow, that, that would be a great feature for all of the carriers that are on Benakiva. So uh, the Nepal team is the innovation team. So they take those items and we build those enhancements and bring those into the platform as uh, up, 
updates. So that's what that team focuses on. They focus strictly and only on innovation items to make the platform better, to enhance the platform. The other team works with implementation. So they work with connecting the Benekiva system to the multiple systems across the carrier organization. And we decided early on to keep those teams completely separate because, you know, one thing we never wanted to do is we never wanted our platform to be, I guess, to be complete, right, to be done. Uh, We always want to make sure that we're enhancing the platform to make it better and better and better. We also decided that we run on on what we call the Apple model. Right. Uh, Everybody loves Apple because when you buy an Apple product, if you need an update, an updating operating system or whatever, you just get it. I mean, they don't they don't nickel and dime you for all of that stuff. So what we said, we want to do the same thing when we have enhancements or upgrades to the platform. The carriers just get it. They don't they don't have to pay extra for that. That's not a change request order. That's not a, you know, a, a, a sales process. They just get it. Love it. Dude, that's an awesome update. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, that that's uh, you're you're definitely riding the growth curve. That's awesome. Yeah. Talk a little bit about kind of the marketplace that you operate in. When when you think of competition for Benakiva, are, are there other third parties out there that you think of, or do you mostly think of internal systems inside potential clients? How do you how do you think about that? Yeah, I would say you know there are some external claims systems out there, but. Uh, there aren't any that that do the entire claims process, but I would say our our biggest our biggest competitor are the internal systems. Now, some of those internal systems could be external third party systems. So let me give you just a little example of what a carrier looks like today. Let's say we're walking into a carrier that has twenty product lines, right? So twenty different products. In that carrier, we're probably going to see anywhere from five to 10 different admin systems, right? We're probably going to see anywhere from eight to 15 to 20 claim systems because each one of these products has different rules, regulations, requirements that, you know, typically a carrier sets up a claim system to process maybe one to three products on one system. The other products are done on separate systems. Some of those systems are homegrown. Some of those systems are externally purchased. So typically what you'll find is you'll see multiple claim systems within an organization to process claims across all of the product lines. The differentiator for Benekiva is we have proven now with one of our carrier clients that we can come in and install one single claim system across all the different product lines and the separate companies that that, com- that carrier owns. So now, instead of having those you know, 8 to 20 different claim systems, your carrier claim staff literally can have one, one single system to process any and every claim throughout the entire organization. To date, there is no other claim system out there that can, that can honestly say that. We've actually proven it. We've done it. So um, that's a huge differentiator for Benekiva as a claim system. Now, with that said, will we replace every single claim system when we go into a carrier? More than likely not. Uh, there, there are some carriers that, you know, there it's just such an old book of business or a small book of business, and, and it's, you know, very simple claims that they, they may just leave it as is. But there are those, those few carriers that are going through, you know, digital transformation and claims transformation and organizational transformation efforts where they want to streamline those systems. You know, they want to take those uh, 8 to 20 systems down to one or down to a couple. So those carriers that are wanting to do that process, those are, you know, perfect fits for Benekiva. So that's the biggest differentiator between our system and others is once you install Benekiva, we can process any and every claim across the organization. The second differentiator is this. With that carrier that we spoke of that has those 8 to 20 different claim systems, as part of the claim process, there's still going to be manual workaround processes that occur outside of the claim system, such as in the United States, interest payments on death benefit proceeds, right? So interest payments on death benefit proceeds today 
are being managed outside of the admin system and outside of the claim system in spreadsheets, vanilla folders. We had one client, one Seriously? carrier client. Yeah, one carrier client, literally, they said, when we hire a claim staff person, we give them a 10 key calculator and a roll of tape. And I was dumbfounded. I said, what in, in today's world, you're, you're, you're still handing out you know, plug in calculators for what? <laughs> this is this is good. This makes me feel not so bad about my business. So that that that's good. Thank you for that. So so with when you install Benakiva, all of those manual workaround processes go away. So we you literally live, breathe, and play inside of Benakiva. Anything and everything that has to do with that claim is done within the platform. And and when I say anything and everything, I mean anything and everything. All the Text messaging, the correspondence, the statements, the interest calculations, rules, uh, all of your you know uh, compliance rules, the, the different state specific rules, all of that stuff is managed within the platform. So those two things are our biggest differentiators. Love it, Brent. Do you guys have uh, any swag at Benakiva? Anything you do for employees? Uh, we do. We we have uh, T-shirts. We have socks so if you go on linkedin and look up benakiva socks there's actually been a <laughs> there's actually this is a funny story there's actually been a uh, a hashtag created by one of our clients that says uh i think it's hashtag benny socks around the world benny socks around the world is the hashtag and how that started was uh you know we i was somewhere and and i saw these polka dotted socks and I thought, wow, you know, our logo is that it looks like a polka dot, but then there's been a Kiva under it. And I said, man, we, we could make socks that are just polka dots and replace the polka dots with our logo. And those would be pretty cool looking socks, you know? <laughs> so uh, so I, I started doing some investigating on could we get socks made? And of course we could. And, and so I had these been socks made. And I'll tell you what, all of a sudden one day, my phone just starts, my alerts on my phone just start going crazy from LinkedIn. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I log into LinkedIn and I see that one of our, but so Nassau Re, um, there were three executives that uh, they took the Benakiba socks, they put them on, they went up to the boardroom and they all three put their feet up on the boardroom table crossed. Yes. And they took a picture of it and they said, before any hard work happens here at NASA RE, we make sure we're wearing our Benakiva socks. <laughs> and all of a sudden, that just went crazy. So um, we, of course, shared it. And then all of a sudden, it became this thing where everybody was saying, well, where are my socks? Where are my socks? I'm telling you what, Mike, for about, I would say for about nine months at least, every Saturday morning, I would pack up Benakiva socks and send out Benakiva socks. Because what I said was, if you truly want a pair, DM me, give me your address, and I'll ship a pair to you. So we shipped out, I mean, we, well, I think our first order was 500, and we already went through those. So we're in our second batch now. But I mean, we've shipped out well over 500 pairs of socks that are Benakiva socks. Oh, okay. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Much richer answer than I was expecting, dude. You nailed it. That's that's awesome. Can I get a pair of socks? Absolutely. <laughs> now, what's really funny is, uh, you know, now we have. If you go to LinkedIn, you'll see um, I posted a post where one of one of our a, a guy that's in been in the insurance business for thirty plus years. Um, I never thought there'd be a day that we'd create Benakiba masks, but we did. We created Benakiba masks. And he's at the Alabama, the Crimson Tide game, and he took a picture of himself at the game, you know, with the with facing the the field. And what's he wearing? The Benakiba mask. And so now I started on LinkedIn. You know, Benakiba masks have now been spotted, right? <laughs> Awesome. Awesome strategy too. I love it. That's great. Well, if you need a uh, your own branded socks or other swag, you can go to fuelmerchandisegroup.com, mention startup competitors, get 10% off your first order. If you don't see awesome custom socks on the website, when you do there, just give them a call or shoot them an email and they will help you get those. Awesome. So fuel, let me make sure I get that fuelmerchandise.com. You got it, man. Perfect. Perfect. And they just, they do just about everything. 
Just about everything. Nice. Yep. And it, yeah. So they, they probably have it on the site. And if they don't, just reach out to them and they, they will help you hunt it down and get it done. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty, that, that'll be pretty cool. <laughs> there you awesome. go. So, so shoot me a, shoot me an email with your address and I'll, I'll get, I'll get some over to you. <laughs> Dude, you know, that's happening. So then when I, when I'm thinking about your sales cycle I, and I'll, I'll just talk here for a minute, you, and then you can fix everything that I got wrong. I'm in my mind, I'm thinking this is a big enterprise B2B sale. You're, you know, it could potentially take a period of time. Sale probably implementation probably unfolds over time because of different systems you have to integrate with different state rollouts different you know all, all the complexities around insurance so talk a little bit about when you think of from a i guess from a go to market strategy perspective how do you get in front of cuz you know so we i would say a you know a fair number of the startups that we have on the podcast are kind of b2b doing some version of enterprise sales probably not as big as yours i'm guessing so it'd be really interesting, I think, to look at what you're doing with companies the size that you're working with and implementations the size that you're working with to understand how you think about from first contact to, no, this is a real client. We're up and running, driving revenue, administering policies for them. They're getting the benefits. Walk through that journey. Yeah. Interestingly enough, you know, back to the research, the three years of research we did, one of the things that we identified was going to be... Uh, a barrier to entry for Ben Akiba was going to be a long sales cycle and a long implementation cycle. And we decided that before coming to the market, we needed to solve that issue. So we went back to the research board and said, okay, why are implementations so bad? Why are implementations, why do they take so long? And the interesting response was, you know, let's say I'm an organization and I want to install. Uh, a platform that manages, you know, all 20 product lines. Okay. In order to, in order to connect to that vendor, that vendor typically gives the carrier, here's our data schema. Here's how you connect to our system. Right. So if you think about a carrier who has all those different admin systems, one, those admin systems need to be able to, to extract data or push data out in a certain schema in order for that vendor to accept it. And that's where we felt that was that was a that was one of the biggest problems right there. It's not connection connecting an uh, a system like Benakiba to all your other systems that that is the hard work. The hard work is getting the two to speak to each other in the correct data format in the correct you know so that the data schemas match. So what we said was we need to take that barrier out of the equation. So what we did was, as part of that two-year build-out process, we built our own data configuration tool that allows us to connect to multiple systems across an organization. The one thing we were trying to solve with this was we wanted to prove that implementation doesn't need to be a bad word anymore. We haven't had, Mike, and this is honest truth, we haven't had one carrier client that has taken more than six months to implement Benakiva. That's unheard of in our business. That's unheard of. Wow. So the, how that occurs is we go to those multiple different systems, whether they be admin systems. Uh, we've actually connected to old green screen admin systems, right? Most vendors say, oh, well, of those you know, 10 systems, three of those are green screen. So we're just taking those off the list. We're not going to connect to those. So you'll have a manual workaround process for those. But we'll connect to these other seven, right? And we say, no, we'll, we'll connect to all 10 of them. I, I, we don't care if they're green screens or not, because even a green screen, you can extract data from it. And we don't care how the data comes because it comes to our system, goes through the uh, configurator tool, and we map, the, we map it to Benakiba exactly how we receive it. So we don't have that data requirement on our vendors to say, in order to speak to Ben Akiva, you have to give us data in this specific schema. We just don't have that. So that allows us to connect to multiple different systems across an organization very quickly to offer that single claims and customer service experience for the claims and customer service staff. You know, they, they don't need to go log into admin systems or document storage systems or uh, CRM systems anymore. They simply log into Ben Akiva and Ben Akiva does the rest. It's a great vision. So 
roll that forward. So if you can, three to five years, what does Ben Akiva look like five years from now when you think about the product roadmap and kind of directionally where you're going within the market? Yeah, you know, it, we were we were honored to be uh, to be invited to speak at one of the research companies. Uh, you know, there's multiple different research companies, the Gartners and the Barcas, I groups, you know, all these different research companies. And uh, we were we were honored to be invited to a private event where. There were about 30 uh, of their carrier clients in the room. And we're talking, you know, this is one of the larger ones. So large carrier clients. And, you know, the person introduced me and said, you know, this is founder and CEO of Ben Akiva, And Ben Akiva is a claims and customer service platform. And then they followed it up with this statement. We believe that Ben Akiva is going to be the next Duck Creek or Guidewire. And at that moment, I was like, wow, <laughs> maybe, maybe we did some build something big here because those are pretty darn good comparisons. Um, you know, both of those companies went public. Both of them are, are doing great. Um, so, you know, we truly believe we built the best claims and customer service system in the marketplace, in the world. Um, we have not, you know, knock on wood, we have not found another claims or customer service system that does what Benakiva does. When you look, when you take that and then you, then you also pair it with the traction, you know, I don't know of any other insure tech out there that can say they've landed 10 carrier clients in less than two years. And four of those are the largest carrier clients in the world. I don't know of any other insure tech that can say that with any honesty, um, but we can. You know, so I, I don't believe that's, you know, me as a good salesperson. I don't believe it's, you know, I believe it's because the research said if you build a product that solves these specific pain points, then that product will be accepted in the marketplace. You know, there's so many technology companies out there that they build a technology and then they go look for a problem to solve with it. And we simply did not do that. We identified very pinpoint specific problems in the industry, and then we built the platform to solve those pinpoint specific problems. Can I just pick at that process again, since you since you brought it back up? So yeah. make that go one level deeper, make that l like a little more tangible. So when you say I want to pinpoint that problem, is that I call a CIO at a big carrier and ask, hey, what are your problems? And then I call the head of claims at that carrier and ask, what are your problems? It, it, like, are these one-on-one -on -one interviews? Is this looking at you looking at analyst data? Is this you looking at laying out competitors in the space and identifying white space? Like, how did you do this? Yeah, these were one-on-one -on -one interviews. These were interviews with real people who were going to ultimately use the system or buy the system. I talked to CFOs at, you know, one of the top five carriers in the world. And I said, do you have these specific problems? He says, oh my gosh, yeah, we do. Is there a single system you can buy out there that solves those specific problems? No, there isn't. If there was, we'd have it, right? Then I went and talked to the claim staff. And that's where I get the story of the multiple monitors and the multiple logins for all these, you know, 15 systems they have to log into to process one single claim. You know, and I ask, why? Why is that? Because I need all this data and information to make a decision on the claim, right? And what was interesting to me is a lot of those uh, decisions were decisions that could be done by the system itself. You don't need a human being to make that decision, right? If the, if the rule of the product follows this rule set, then the answer is this. A, a human being doesn't need to look at that. So our system can literally process claims from intake to payout, everything in between without a human being looking at it in some cases. You know, so that, that, what that does is the one thing that we got wrong in the research, we felt that claim staff would not like Ben Akiva. And the reason we felt claim staff would not like Ben Akiva because they would look at the system and say, Wow, Ben Akiva does all of the correspondence and statement requirements as per the requirements for the individual states automatically. Right now, we have a team of people that does that, right? So if I buy Ben Akiva, what does the team of people do, right? So we felt that the claim staff would be the ones who wouldn't want Ben Akiva. 
But what was interesting was, is when we went through our process of selling Benakiva and we put the proof of concept or the proof of value, whatever you want to call it, into their hands, the claim staff became our biggest allies. They came our, became our biggest cheerleaders. And, you know, one story, I've, I have a story of a, a CEO. He says, he says, Brent, I got I to gotta tell you this story. He says, I had the head of claims come to my office raving about Benakiva, this claim system. She said, he said, this woman could not rave more about this system. She said, it's, it's going to literally change our claims department in a good way. And he says, let me tell you, <laughs> he says, one, head of claims usually doesn't come to my office. And two, when head of claims does, it's not for something good. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so um, that was the one thing in the research that we got wrong. We felt that we'd have to really sell the claim staff on this system, but it's actually been the opposite. Once we, you know, because all, remember, all the problems we solve in the system are problems that claim staff gave us, you know? So these are pain points that they feel every single day. I had one claim staff gal say, you know, the thing I love about the Benakiva system is it takes all that mundane tasks out of my way so I can truly focus on the, the right claims to focus on, right? So, so it's almost like this, this 80-20 rule. Let the system handle the 80% claims that you don't need to look at. So now you truly have the time to dive into those 20 percenters. D- I mean, that's <laughs> awesome detail. Thank you. Love that. When when you're so uh, so, I'm I'm trying to think about how to phrase this. So you clearly are product market fit. You're kicking butt. It's awesome. Go back to when, like, when did you know you had product market fit, and how and how did you know it? What did that kind of what did it feel like, and what did it look like when you were like, oh wow, like we like. I know we did all that research. I still didn't think it was going to work. Like it, it's actually working. Look at that. Like what, what, what did that look like when it happened? Yeah. A, a couple things, you know, early, early on, um, you know, we funded Benakiva ourselves to get it to, to the market. I mean, we, we didn't take on any funding, you know, the two years of building it out. We, we funded that ourselves uh, to get the, the product ready to come to market. When we went to the market to our first carrier client, and that carrier client, this is public knowledge, it was Homesteaders Life Company. And the reason we chose Homesteaders Life Company is because they process a lot of claims. Now, it's a very niche product. You know, they sell pre-need insurance products, which is basically funeral planning. So you pre-fund and plan your funeral. There's an insurance product that funds that. And But what we knew about them was they processed a lot of claims a year. And we weren't necessarily concerned about the dollar amount of the claims. We were more concerned, can the system process a huge amount of claims in a year? So that's really why we said, you know, we need a, we need a, a carrier to test this, to really load test the system and see if we can handle it. So long story short, that carrier said, yep, you know, we, we want to give this a whirl. And, uh, you know, we started the implementation process of Benakiva and, what was interesting was is, is fast forward, I get a phone call from the from the CEO, Steve, and he says, hey, can you come to my office? And I said, sure, sure. So I go to his office and uh, he says, I, I have a few stories to tell. I said, great. And he tells me the one story about the claim staff, which I just shared already. And again, that was great to hear. But the other two stories he shared, he says, he says, you know, I'm part of this mutual presidents association of these mutual companies. And uh, he says, I was at a meeting with, you know, 30 other CEOs, and I asked a few questions to the group. He says, I ask, is your claims process kind of stuck in the past? Is it fully digitized to where you can do a claim, both the beneficiary and carrier claim staff can process claims anywhere, anytime, any device? And they said, well, no, I mean, if, if we could, that'd be great. <laughs> And so he follows it up. He says, is there a system out there that's easily in, easily implemented that would solve those issues? And every single one of them said, well, no, if there was, we'd have it. And he says, okay, the third question, if there was one, would you pay for it? And they said, absolutely. 
So again, he's telling me this story and I'm, I'm reaching back to the, to my research archives in my brain going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, I mean, you're not telling us anything we don't know. So that was one of the first times when I felt like, okay, I think we, we have something here. But then he followed it up with this. He says, we love the platform. We want to, we want to obviously use the platform. We want to be a client. He says, but we're an insurance company. So we need to make sure that you're going to be here. How are you going to fund this company? And I said, well, you know, Steve, it was, it's interesting you say that. I was planning on funding it ourselves or myself through the first carrier client. And then I was going to go raise capital, but I was, wasn't going to raise any capital. I was going to raise strategic capital. And he says, well, what do you mean by strategic capital? And I said, well, I probably raise capital from either someone who A, wants to partner with Benakiva or B, a carrier who wants to use Benakiva. And he says, well, I'm glad you said that because we want to invest. And I said, well, that's great. Um, so to date, uh, we have never asked for a nickel to fund Ben Akiva, but Ben Akiva is very well funded. And, uh, you know, that was one of the first times when I felt like, OK, I, th- I, I think the research is panning out here. The second time was I was I was presenting in, in at an event because I speak at a lot of events on different topics, not necessarily Benakiva or claims. You know, I speak on multiple other topics, which then if you give a good presentation, most people will want to know or, or they'll ask, you know, what is Benakiva? And that's that's my cue to, that I can start talking about the Benakiva. But I was given this presentation and I got the question of, you know, Ben Akiva, what is Ben Akiva? So I told him it's a claims and customer service platform and, you know, started, did my little two 60 second pitch on Ben Akiva. And then it got followed up with, well, how many clients do you have? And I said, well, you know, we launched in the middle of 2018 and this was still in 2018, right? (laughs) And I said, and so far we've got two carrier clients and we've got a third one going live right you know, in a couple months. And so they said, so the, another follow-up question was, so, so you have three carrier clients in less than nine months? And I said, yeah. And everybody said, well, that's unheard of. That's to, to have three carrier clients live in production, fully implemented in less than nine months of you coming to the marketplace. That's unheard of. And so that's, that was the second moment when I thought, Okay, I think we I think we truly have something here because evidently it should have taken us a couple years to get a few clients, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, it should have. <laughs> clients that size for sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, awesome. Well, I I know we're right around thirty minutes, uh, and I want to be respectful of your time. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this. If if somebody wants to learn more about Benakiva or if they want to get in touch with you directly, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, that I'm pretty open with my contact info. It's Brent, B-R-E-N-T at Benakiva.com. Or you can simply call or text me 515-202-0862. Right on. One thing, you are open with your contact yeah, info. One thing I, I, I always promise, and this goes back to my advisor days, is, is you know, I might, I might not answer every single email and uh, voicemail uh, within a couple minutes, but I, I do return every email and every voicemail by the end of the day. So it's one of those, those things that I've kind of adhered to and, and I still do to this day. <laughs> all, right, all right, stop. We're, we're going to go deeper on that. How do you do that? I've tried to do that in my life and it, it, it feels like an impossible task. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's literally organization of, of your inbox or your voicemails. Um, you know, and essentially what I do is, is I, I glance at an email, for example, and if it's a carrier or client or prospect email, then, you know, I put that, I, I flag that. So by the end of the day, those have those flagged emails have to be answered. But if it's something like, uh, you know, someone asks me to, you know, it's, it's someone who asked for a meeting about selling me a product or something. Well, those, I, I do answer all of them, but I don't answer them all within, you know, within the 24 hours. Okay. Check. Got it. <laughs> so it's, it's about, it's about segregating your, your contact. As, as so you're, you're triaging, prioritizing and executing. Yep. Love it. Yep. All right. Good deal. <laughs> uh, Brent, this has been awesome, man. Thank you so much for doing it. Thank you, man. It's fun. If you're thinking of launching a SaaS product, startup competitors can provide data on your closest competitors. 
survey potential users, or provide other product validation services. Learn more at startupcompetitors.com.